Ahead lies the Arctic shore, and beyond, the sea. And still the little animals surge forward. Their frenzy takes them tumbling down the terraced cliffs, creating tiny avalanches of sliding soil and rocks, and seemingly indestructible lemons. final precipice. This is the last chance to turn back. Yet over they go, casting themselves bodily out into space. Yes, the incredible story of the lemmings committing mass suicide, plunging over the cliff. We all know the story. I reference it often, talking about lemmings jumping off the cliff. Even though, interestingly enough, I know this is complete and total BS. <laughs> and this is something I've known for a very long time. Remember hearing about it when I was a kid. Yeah, this isn't real. <laughs> they staged these scenes in order to make it look like the lemmings were committing mass suicide, but they do nothing of the sort. And we don't have to take Snopes' word for it, although this is one of those subjects where perhaps they can actually do a reasonable enough job in getting to the, uh, the bottom of it. But let's go to the actual source of how we know know 100% that this footage was staged and faked. It comes from a CBC investigation back in 1982 on the Fifth Estate called Cruel Camera, all about how animals are used and abused in movies, and they had a specific scene about this white wilderness quote-unquote documentary from the Walt Disney Corporation and how it was a total lie. So he worked on a film called White Wilderness, Disney film. Do you recall a scene involving lemmings in that? Yes. Did you shoot that? No. There were about three cameramen working on that. So what did you hear about the lemmings? Can you recreate the scene for us? Do you remember? Well, what I know it was taken. Was it, was, it was it was a recreated thing done in Canmore, in Alberta. You say recreated? How? Huh? Well, they they built a set. It looked like the Arctic, and had a nice painted sky for a background and. Uh, bought their lemmings up in Churchill. The Eskimo kids run around and caught them at 25 cents a piece and shipped them all to Canmore. And they made a little uh, thing like a turntable and ran the lemmings around and uh, filmed the lemming migration to the sea. Now the scene showed <coughs> dozens, hundreds of lemmings. It's the same lemmings over and over again falling into a body of water, purportedly the Arctic Ocean. Yeah, that was the Bow River. The Arctic Sea. Well, that was the Bow River. <laughs> it's not given to man to understand all of nature's mysteries. But as nearly as he can surmise, it would appear that the lemmings consider this body of water just another lake. And if it's a lake, then it must have a farther shore. And so they strike out boldly. But gradually, strength wanes. Determination ebbs away. And soon the Arctic Sea is dotted with tiny bobbing bodies. The water in which those tiny bodies bobbed flows under the ice behind me. Not the ice of the Arctic Sea, but the ice of the Bow River, which runs through downtown Calgary, about 1,100 miles south of the Arctic Circle. Oh, this story is particularly interesting for an Albertan like myself. So I, I knew about the staging of this documentary and everything. I had no idea that it was done in Canmore, in the Bow River. <laughs> <laughs> and here's Roy Disney, who was uh, heading up the documentary, the Wilderness Documentary uh, Studio for a while, and they're talking to him. Uh, fascinating documentary here. I think you guys should watch this uh, in its entirety, but you get the idea. Uh, this quote-unquote nature documentary purporting to show, and, and, well, it's not for up to us to understand nature's mysteries, but here's one that we can show you. And if you see it on the screen, you better believe it, right? 
right? Well, no, wrong, actually. And in fact, this was such a powerful and resonant idea for some reason that it penetrated so deep down into the collective consciousness that we all know the story of the lemmings leaping to their, their watery fate. Well, isn't that strange? Isn't that odd? And isn't that a bit disturbing? Well, it can be. And there was this little exchange from the the polar bear hoax uh, propaganda watch that we did last week, where uh, the user Duck said, uh, "Don't forget the story of how lemmings kill themselves, aka let's throw some rodents off a cliff and film them drowning," which uh, fooled several generations of school kids. To which a quarter report user Man Bear Pig replied. Oh my god, just checked. I was one of those school kids. This is... I thought my 9-11 w- w- awakening was rude. This is just... Uh, I mean, not only did Disney lie, but as you said, the animals were herded over the bank of a nearby river and unceremoniously chucked into the water where they drowned. And if that isn't bad enough, animal cruelty was tragically common and goes on about that. And then... And then Man Bear Pig brings up the fact that, well, actually, this is another form of insidious propaganda. And uh, she mentions a couple of old documentaries, uh, Real Bad Arabs and the Mickey Mouse Monopoly, that uh, deal with these types of ideas and how they can be, how, how we can be Im- embedded with certain propaganda through the, the outlet of film and media generally, but film being particularly powerful in embedding these types of fake stories deeply into our subconscious. And yeah, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek, a little bit joking. I was one of those school kids, this has ruined my childhood. But it's true. It really is upsetting when we discover something that we believed in for so long really was a lie. And that applies, obviously, not only to a nature documentary about lemmings, which on the whole, in, you know, when you look at the state and the nature of the deceptions that we've uh, been asked to believe in, in uh, the last, uh, well, our entire lives, this is may not rank up there as one of the most important but it does tell us something about the way that these operations can work and the way that we can be tricked. Even if it isn't for nefarious purposes necessarily, maybe, you know, the Disney Corporation just wanted to fill our fill the screen with something interesting to look at and they went out of their way to do it, buying, buying lemmings in Manitoba and shipping them off to Alberta to film them jumping off into the banks of the bow <laughs> and calling it the Arctic Ocean. I mean, just... The extent that they went to to trick the audience is, uh, you almost have to take your hat off. They went to such extremes, but uh, it it does speak to a, a, a something that is extremely important when we look at pop propaganda and something that I am interested in looking at it closer. So uh, Man Bear Pick has a couple of examples of uh, things that people should be looking at in the way that film can sh- distort our perception of the world. But of course, this is a topic that I'm very interested in and in exploring in Propaganda Watch series. So I'm very interested in your, your uh, other suggestions or recommendations along these lines. Uh, I think there's even an even deeper issue because it's one thing for documentaries to simply stage scenes and tell you they're real. I mean, that's quite obvious propaganda. And when it is exposed, if it is eventually exposed, can be quite jarring. But there's a much more insidious form of propaganda out there that's at work in the quote unquote fiction that we watch, the, the sitcoms that we grew up with or the dramas that embed certain ideas and certain human behaviors into us. We see it on the screen and then we enact it in our lives and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It becomes a chicken and egg. Do I do this because I saw it on TV or do they do it, put it on their TV screen So because people do it in real life? Well, at a certain point, you is a hall of mirrors and you don't necessarily know. So this is something I want to explore more generally in the, uh, in the Propaganda Watch series is the idea of how media per- shapes our perceptions in these types of ways, uh, documentaries or fiction. So, uh, of course, I'm interested in uh, in your guys' take. Please do leave your comments, and I, I certainly will be checking them for future installments of this series. That's going to do it for today. That is your edition of Propaganda Watch for this week. Looking forward to talking to you again very soon.